Morning, Sarge. Morning, sir. I'd like to report a crime. I've been verbal. Oh, certainly, sir. If I could just take a few particulars. Name? You know who I am, Sarge. It's me, Ben. I'm sorry, sir. Just because you're my commanding officer, I can't give you any preferential treatment. Excellent idea, Sarge. Just treat me like a normal member of the public. Right. Take a seat. We'll be with you in five or six hours. <laughs> now, we'll uh, skip that bit, shall we? As you wish, sir. Kevin, no. take a statement of this gentleman, would you? Right. Uh, if you'd like to come with me, sir, or perhaps you'd be more comfortable in your own office. No, the bleak room with the hard chairs we find, Kevin. <laughs> but uh, no physical violence, Oh, absolutely sir. not, sir. <laughs> So, uh, what appears to be the problem, sir? No need to call me sir, Kevin. Just treat me like a normal member of the public. Well, that's what we call all members of the public, sir. What? Sir, sir. <laughs> you know what they call members of the public in America, Kevin? Asshole. <laughs> Dog breath. Slime ball. Don't think I'll ever catch on in the home county, sir. <laughs> so, sir, you've been burgled. Again? So, sir, you've been burgled. <laughs> no, I've been burgled again. You people, you sit there in your smug blue uniforms. You feel different if it happened to you. Just calm down, sir. Let's just start from the beginning. <laughs> so, sir, you've been burgled. Yes, the first time was a week ago. No, I didn't report it. Well, because you know how it is, you mislay things and just think they'll turn up eventually. Mm. So what was missing? The deep freeze in the three-piece suite. <laughs> That's the third time this gang has struck this week. Well, it's fair enough when members of the public get robbed, but what kind of world is it where the police force get burglarised? Well, Wendy, you know what they say? All property is theft. Who says that, then? The Bolsheviks. <laughs> they might be onto something there. If all property was theft, then we could nick everybody. Make the job a lot easier. <laughs> yeah. I got The Sting out the other week on video starring Robert Redford, Paul Newman and Robert Shaw. Did you really, madam? I've never seen anyone look less like a policeman than you do. Here's a bottle of cider, madam. Perhaps you'd like to harangue people on the precinct. <laughs> I don't like your tone, officer. And I don't like your dress, but I'm too polite to say so. <laughs> You can't be too careful these days. All sorts of people call at your door. They told my neighbours they were removals men. Everything's gone. Furniture, carpets, the car, even the gardening tools. I'm sorry, madam, but do you know there's a hole in your face that won't stop moving? <laughs> I'm a ratepayer, you know, and I insist that you give me two constables to accompany me home to make a list of the missing articles. Why settle for two? Why not have four? I can't make them a cup of tea, you know. They took the kettle. <laughs> Here's a kettle. <laughs> Cups. <laughs> Look. And British Rail real leaf tea bags. John, Phil, Brian, Shirley, go with Mrs. Ivy Greenwood. Come along. <laughs> What an obnoxious woman! She made the little hairs on the back of my neck stand on end. You fancy her, don't you, Sarge? Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> no need to be embarrassed. It's the same for all of us. In fact, it's worse when you're a woman and you get to my age and start wondering whether you're still attractive. All the blokes under 30 want to marry you and all the blokes over 30 just want to sleep with as many women as possible before they die. Human nature, Wendy. What are you doing here, Ted? Shouldn't you be off to bed? God, I hate working nights. Twenty years in the force and this is what I amounts to. I hate sitting up in Cortinas all night, sleeping in your clothes with a kebab as a pillow. <laughs> Pot of lager, please, Sarge, and a large scotch. Sorry, Ted, lager's off. Do you want to wait while I change the barrel? Uh, give us a bottle of Guinness, then. <laughs> your Brenda phoned earlier. Oh, yeah, wanted me to pick up her Valium from the chemist. No, she was using the new hotline. She wanted to report you for drink driving. <laughs> Sergeant with the post, Ted. I'm off duty. <laughs> that teacher Kevin goes out with. Teachers, eh? Scum of the earth. I think the government should suspend him and send in the troops. <laughs> it's an opinion. Kevin, want to talk about it? 
Far away, then. Don't worry about them. Policemen are like doctors. Heard it all before. <laughs> <laughs> Is he all right? It's Kevin. You know, we've been out together a couple of times. Do you think I'm attractive? <laughs> yes, of course you are. I just wondered. Carry on, you and Kevin. Oh, it's difficult to know I have to say this. I'm not a bit of a dog. <laughs> <laughs> no? That's all right, then. <laughs> you see, I've got myself in an impossible situation. I'm not as attractive as you, though. Oh, you know, I'm not. <laughs> Your hair's natural. Yes, but I'm not pretty. Oh, no, you're not pretty. <laughs> You've got a lot of character. I'm bland. You see, the problem is I haven't told Kevin yet. There is this bloke I really like, you see. <laughs> I just don't know how to let him know. I'm interested. Oh, tell him. I could, you know. I could just... I could just look him up in the phone book and ring him. <laughs> well, there you are, Kevin. Oh, yeah. Oh, I don't know how to tell him this. Oh, God, I'm a recent. Oh, you're the only person I can talk to. Do you mind if I ask your advice? I'll ring him now. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the senior officer around here? I am. Oh, well, I want to make a complaint. So do I. You'll have to wait your turn. <laughs> Sarge, uh, get on to forensic. Get him to send over a couple of blokes with tweed jackets and magnifying glasses. <laughs> I want a full systematic search of my garden. If they haven't taken your polyanthus, sir. <laughs> Sarge, the robbers might have got in over the garden fence and accidentally dropped something that might give us a lead. Um, a glove with their name in, perhaps. I've got an idea, sir. Why don't we search all the bushes in your garden for fibre fragments? If we can narrow down what sort of jacket this robber was wearing, we might be able to work out what sort of trousers and jumper he had on, and whether or not he bought them from a catalogue. Then all we have to do is draw up a list of everybody in Great Britain who buys their clothes from catalogues, <laughs> and go through and eliminate them one by one. It'd be easier if we had a glove with his name in it. Look! <laughs> I am not hanging around here all day. All right, all right, I'll speak to you in a minute. Ted, would you show this gentleman through to my office, please? I'm off duty. Oh, good grief! <laughs> if you'd like to make yourself at home, sir. Right. Uh, put some opera on if you like. I think I've got something there to suit most tastes. <laughs> There's a tin of corned beef in the top right-hand drawer if you get peckish, but I'm afraid I've lost a little key. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. I'm afraid we've got a bit of a problem here, sir. Yes, Sarge? Your burglary doesn't score enough points to warrant investigation. You what? National policy, I'm afraid, sir. Home Office Directive, sir. 82% of all crimes must go uninvestigated. I mean, if we haven't got a witness and no chance of detecting, then we, we just don't bother. Would you file this, please, Kevin? Oh, yes, Sarge. That's not fair. <laughs> Ted, go and catch this burglar. Oh, no. Duty, sir. Mind you, you get me off nights, I might see what I can do. That's bribery, Ted. Uh, blackmail, actually, sir. Yes, <laughs> Sorry, Ted, we're not allowed to investigate crimes that don't score enough points. And now my wife lately bought a gorgonzola cheese. She bought it on the shop mark cheap. She thought that a loving husband had to please, if only till his birthday to keep. And so she locked that cheese up safely in a drawer. A month went by, perhaps a little more. And when the birthday came around, the party went off great. Until she bought the gorgonzola cheese out on her plate. <laughs> I can do what I like. <laughs> I think perhaps you'd better fill in another form, sir. Thank you, Sarge. Kevin. What? Come here. Excuse Come me, here. young man. Yes, madam? What is your desk sergeant's name? Sarge. His Christian name. Morning, I suppose. <laughs> he looks like a Donald or Dimitri to me. Ellen's looking for you. What? Where? In the locker room. She's got something terrible to tell you. What? I don't know. She wouldn't say. <laughs> I got a list of the missing items, Sergeant. Ooh, Mrs. Greenwood. Call me Ivy. Only if you'll creep up the outside of my house. <laughs> <laughs> my husband used to say that. Your husband? He's dead. Oh, that's good. Sad. That's sad. <laughs> Everything's insured, so I won't worry about getting it back. Funny. I always intended to redecorate after my husband died, and now I've got the chance. Russet is a nice colour for a living room. Yes, I was thinking of russet. Were you? Life's full of ironies, isn't it? 
A month before my husband became bedridden, I took up judo. It came in very <laughs> handy. Getting him in and out of bed. I could take him down to the pub in a fireman's lift. <laughs> and he was taller than you are. You're obviously a very strong woman, Ivy. <laughs> I was so rude earlier. Please, accept this. It's from Marks. It's the biggest they had. You can take it back if it's too small. Uh, Ivy, the Middleford Operatic Society are doing showboat tonight. Um, I was wondering if you'd like to go. The blacking up can be a bit distressing, but the tunes are ever so good. I'd love to. Really? Starts at eight. See you outside Knickerbox, 7.30. Yes. <laughs> oh, I don't know your name. Oh, it's Sarge. <laughs> your parents knew you were going to be a policeman when they christened you then. Yes, my father was a policeman. It was a toss-up between Super and Sarge. <laughs> if I'd been a girl, they were going to call me Nurse. <laughs> Till tonight then, Sarge. <laughs> Hello, Kevin. What are you doing here? She's got something to tell you, Kevin. Oh, no. You can't come on the sponsored hike next week, can you? <laughs> 47 sponsors I've got, and now you're not even going to come. God, I feel so stupid. It's not that, Kevin. This is something that could affect the rest of our life. The rest of our life? How do you mean? Anyone got well, 10p? The box keeps swallowing my money. <laughs> Could you excuse us, please, Wendy? May as well phone him while I'm in the mood, eh? When did you mind going away? Leave us on our own, please. How did he react? <laughs> to what you were going to tell him? She hasn't told him yet. <laughs> <gasps> All right. I'll be off then. <laughs> Leave you two lovebirds to it. <laughs> <laughs> it's very hard to know how to say this, Kevin. Just say it, Ellen. Kevin. Excuse me, love. Oh, for God's sake, Dave, do you mind? We're trying to have a personal conversation here. I'm pregnant. She's pregnant. <laughs> right, sir. That's the lot. In the unlikely event that we recover this stuff, is there any work telephone number we can contact you at? Yes, sir. Middleford 24245. 245. <laughs> any extension number? No, just ask for Sarge and he'll put you through. Sarge. <laughs> Fine. Put your sign here. Great. Great. Well, that's just wonderful. That's it. That is it. I may as well just kiss my youth goodbye. What's all this about kissing nudes, Kevin? <laughs> no more independence, no more making my own decisions, no more nights out with the lads. It's all right, Kevin. I'm your commanding officer. You can tell me whatever it is. Ellen's pregnant and she wants me to marry her. I'll be in my office if anyone needs me. <laughs> Sarge, that is my office, isn't it? Yes, sir. Only there's a strange man sitting at my desk. Yes, sir. He's... My replacement? <laughs> Are you trying to tell me I've been set? Oh, well. I might as well just go and clean out my desk and be off. 20 years in the force, and this is how you're treated. Sir, there's just been a phone call saying you've been reinstated. Oh, well, it's good to be back at the helm. <laughs> Why don't you have a word with the man in your office, sir? Yes, Sarge, I'll do that. One last thing, sir. Yes, Sarge. He's a member of the public, and you're the commanding officer. Thank you, Sarge. <laughs> right, you're a member of the public, and I'm the commanding officer. Now. What can I do for you? I want to make a complaint. I have been persistently followed and harassed by one of your officers. Oh, that's probably because you've done something wrong. We don't follow people for no reason. We haven't got the manpower for it. If I am under surveillance, I would like to know why. In an ideal world, we'd be able to follow everybody, of course. <laughs> now, let's just uh, see if you're on our wanted list. Uh, what's your name? Martin. Andy Martin. Well, Mr. Martin. I haven't done anything wrong. That's what they all say, Mr. Martin. Or should I say, Jerry the Weasel? <laughs> what? Nothing, just a stab in the dark. <laughs> you get some of our best results that way. <laughs> no, nothing here. Well, Mr. Martin, could you describe the officer who's been harassing you? Shortish, blonde. 
A fringe, yeah, a bob cut. Pretty. Definitely pretty. Blonde and pretty. Are you sure this officer wasn't a woman? <laughs> she is a woman. Right, now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. I think you better come and talk to Kevin. He's on top of the drinks machine in a fetal position. That's her! The one that's been harassing me! Thought you said she was pretty. I want to make a complaint! Well, Wendy, what have you got to say for yourself? It's a fair cop. We've got her, sir. Who do you think you are, Ted? Some sort of Greek chorus? Barging in here and commenting on what other people are doing? Of course we've got her, Ted. I can see we've got her. Wendy's not denying that. No, sir, the burglar. No, sir, the burglar? What's that meant to mean? It's not a proper sentence, Ted. It hasn't got a verb in it. I have nicked the burglar. Sir. Well, why didn't you say so before? Well, that's Where is he? It's the unusual thing, sir. You Good news, everyone. Ellen and I are getting married. <laughs> well, congratulations. I hope you'll be very happy together. Are there to be any pretense? Kevin has agreed to marry me because I'm pregnant. Ellen? Well, we don't mind them knowing that, do we, Kevin? No, I suppose not. And I just want to say how noble I think Kevin's been about all this. Well done, mate. Especially as the baby isn't his. <laughs> Feeling better, Kevin? Yes, thanks. I'm sorry, Kevin. It just hadn't occurred to me that I might not be the father, that's all. Even though we've never slept together. <laughs> you can't get someone pregnant just by sitting next to them in spudge you like, you know, Kevin. You know, well, I haven't given it much thought. I, I don't think about sex that often. I thought men were meant to think about sex about once every 11 seconds on average. Once every 11 seconds while they're actually doing it. <laughs> Apparently, that Julio Iglesias has had over 3,000 women. What for? He's not even good looking. How many have you had, Kevin? Oh, uh, less than that. <laughs> Ellen, can I ask you something? Who is the father? I don't think that really matters now, does it? I think I've got the right to know, Ellen, especially as we're going to be married. You mean you still... Oh, Kevin! Oh, it was Rodri Llewellyn. Oh, no! Rodri Llewellyn? Who's Rodri Llewellyn? Uh, the PA teacher. What's he like? He's a Welsh bloke in a tracksuit. Oh. <laughs> I was feeling insecure. It was before I met up with you again. It was just a one-night stand at the parent-teachers meeting. <laughs> not very romantic, is it? After the parent-teachers meeting? Well, not after, during. <laughs> across the stage. Oh. <laughs> Wendy, uh, Ben's ready to drag you over to Coles. Don't worry, I'm on your side. Sarge, can we have some tea flavoured drinks in here, please? <laughs> right, Wendy. According to Mr Martin's statement, you first saw him three weeks ago in a public house. Shaggers. What? Here's the theme pub in the precinct. Used to be the Royal Oak. Oh. Come in. Not often we have a wedding at the station, sir. So I thought we'd skip the tea-flavoured drinks and have champagne. Oh, thank you, Sarge. When I say champagne, it's actually a, a champagne-style drink from South Africa. Just put it down, Sarge. <laughs> and I've rustled up a few volleyballs. Um, egg and ham, prawn. Oh, and these are really a bit special. Smoked salmon and cream cheese. Very tasty, I'm sure, Sarge. And I've got some red biscuits out there, smeared with little patty. But uh, they've gone just a tidge soggy, so I'll pop out and do some more. Right. So, Wendy, what first brought Mr. Martin to your attention? It was my friend Marina, sir. She said, look at that geezer over there by the gents, Wend. Hanging around outside toilets. Sure sign of a drugs dealer, sir. And then, Wendy, you followed Mr. Martin all the way home? Yes, sir. In a police car? Yes, sir. With the siren on? Right, don't you? Next morning, she was knocking on my door while it was still dark. Yeah, probably searching for drugs, sir. Smack. I'd like to give you a smack. Well, Wendy, <laughs> did you observe anything unusual? Um, well, he, um, he, he, he did have the sofa in a bit of a funny place, sir. What do you mean? Well, it kind of dominates the room where you've got it. If I was you, I'd put it under the windows. Now, last Thursday, Wendy, at two o'clock in the morning, you got Mr Martin out of bed, 
to ask him if he knew that it was two o'clock in the morning. The final straw was yesterday at that nightclub. The Middleford Hawaiian experience. She comes marching up to me in her uniform with reflector shades and shouts, Oi, do you want to dance or what? Well, I had to shout. The music was very loud. Look, Mr. Martin, before we take this any further, would you like to contact your lawyer? I am a lawyer. Not your day, is it, Wendy? <laughs> you do realise you could be facing suspension? Possibly even dismissal. Have you anything to say to account for your behaviour, Wendy? I fancied him. <laughs> what? I fancied him! And I couldn't think of a way to get to know him. Oh, God, I'm so parents. More champagne, anyone? Some champagne, only some an alcoholic. Wendy? <laughs> I think you better say sorry to Mr. Martin. Yes, sir. Sorry. <laughs> You're right, Sarge. Yeah, fine, thanks, Ted. Sarge, that jumper is not police issue, is it? <laughs> no, sir. Marks and Spencers. <laughs> Come on, Ted. Let's have a look at this burglar. I won't beat about the bush, Sergeant. I've got something to tell you. I won't be able to come to a showboat with you tonight. Oh. And my husband isn't dead. He's not a well man, though. Oh. He's the only thing the burglars didn't take. <laughs> In a way, I wish they had. Oh. I see. I'm sorry I lied. I don't know why I did. I really do like you. But he needs me. I've got something for you, Ivy. I was going to give it to you in the interval tonight. Um, it's a hamper of cheese. Oh, really? How romantic. I love cheese. Soft cheese, hard cheese, <laughs> festering Pyrenean goat's cheese with tiny little wispy hairs on it. <laughs> it's all for you. Every time I pass Marks and Spencer's, I'll think of you, Ivy. <laughs> And every time I see some cheese, I'll think of you, Sarge. It's a stroke of luck, really, sir. I bought up just in time to see our burglar boggles brass loading your microwave in the back of an estate car. Like a blinking removals man. Or should I say, removals woman? A female burglar? Yeah, good looking and all. Cracking legs on her. Yeah, I'd give her one. <laughs> Hello, Judith. Oh, you, you know each other, do you? Yes, Ted. She's my wife. <laughs> so, where are you taking me then? What about that big acid house party on the other side of the industrial estate? Where are we going to get tickets for that? We don't need tickets. <laughs> I got a warrant. <laughs> Pick you up at seven, then. Yeah, and uh, make sure it's an unmarked car this time. We're going to be ever so happy together, Kevin. I know we are, Ellen. Oh, and every day when I'm slogging away at school, I'll be thinking about you with the baby. Oh, I can't bring the baby here, Ellen. The place is full of criminals. No, you'll be at home with the baby. <laughs> what? Well, Robert is going to have to give up their job, and it's not going to be me. <laughs> yeah, but it's not going to be me either. Oh, come on, Kevin. You know you're a hopeless policeman, and I'm a very good teacher. Hey, look, I think we should discuss this, Ellen. And another thing, Kevin. If the baby's a boy, I'm going to call him Rodri. <laughs> We've been separated for six years, Judith. Yes. So what's the idea of stealing my property? I was only taking what was mine. You've taken everything. Well, you keep the house. It's a police house. And the car and the dog are yours. The car is a police car and the dog is a police dog. <laughs> what's fair for burglary? Six years? Take it to prison, Ted. What? I'm sending you to prison, Judith. Burglary is a very serious offence. Oh, I don't think you can do that, then. I can do what I like. I'm the commanding officer. Sarge said so. <laughs> She's well within her rights, Ben. Look, Ted, could you please leave us alone? Look, Judith, how about we give it another go, eh? Ben, our relationship was a farce. We never saw each other. Well, we'd have seen more of each other if you joined the police when I suggested it. <laughs> it was me who wanted a decent life for the twins. You wanted them adopted. Of course I wanted them adopted. They'd have been better off adopted. You were never a proper mother, always out of your family planning committee meetings. And you always out of that sodded Rotary Club. Don't you ever call my Rotary Club sodded. <laughs> 
let's not have one of our stupid rows, Ben. Why not? They're always more fun than the sensible ones. <laughs> it all seems such a long time ago now. What does? 1969. <laughs> the Isle of Wight Rock Festival. Bob Dylan. King Crimson. The Sid Lawrence Orchestra. I don't know why you packed in the drug squad. You really knew how to enjoy yourself in those days. I was so young. You know, that was the, the most impressive display of policemen dressing up ever mounted. You know, it was my idea for the lads to wear ladies' wigs, you know. Mm, the constable in the beehive wasn't very convincing, though. That wasn't a beehive. The silly fool put it on over the top of his helmet. <laughs> I've never seen anyone dance the way you danced the Moody Blues, Judith. I was on drugs, Ben. You should have nicked me, really. And still, I remember thinking at the time. That woman, she dances like a cheetah. She's got the teeth of the hydra upon her. I painted a giant sunflower on one of your buttocks. You did? I remember. It was still there. You went AWOL for two months. Yes. Two bizarre months living with your weird friends in that farmhouse in Suffolk. Then, one day, we were making love. And your wig fell off. The summer of love. The summer of love. I bloody hated it. Look, then. Take this. It's about custody of the boys. It'll save me posting it. See you in court. I didn't know you was a Rotarian, Ben. Well, it looks like being a long court battle. She's going to be fighting me every inch of the way over the custody of the twins. She doesn't want them, and neither do I. Excuse us. Mind your backs. What are you doing, sir? Lager's off. Just going to change the barrel. The wedding's off, then? Oh, Kevin. Don't worry, Kevin. Women will always be a mystery to mere coppers like us. Who knows what strange chemistry draws some couples together and drives others apart? Oh, well, it's all fate, isn't it, Sarge? Hey, I mean, I reckon it's all in the stars. I mean, take me and Brenda. Been together 23 years. She's a Sagittarius. And what are you? An alcoholic. <laughs> Come on, everybody. Back to work. May as well get these up while we're down here, Kevin. We're out of Britvic. <laughs> You were married once, weren't you, Sarge? Oh, to Dorothy. Poor Dorothy. What happened to her? Was she dead? No, she was a prison visitor. Took a shine to an axe murderer in Broadmoor. Now they're living together. Oh. Where are they living, then? In Broadmoor. <laughs> Come on, lad. We were going a burglars to catch. They've taken everything. <laughs> Ted. Still, look on the bright side, Ben. The lager's back on. 